Hey guys, welcome to our podcast, Unsubscribed. I'm Peter. I'm Dessa. And our goal with this podcast is to shift away from all of the hang up with the cultural norms we see. For example, when you get emails from a company, they keep on coming and coming until you intentionally click to unsubscribe. And so with this podcast, that's our goal as well, to get you to intentionally click unsubscribe from the hang-ups, from the problems of culture and society now, and to just center ourselves on starting a conversation centered on God's Word. So today we're going to be talking about the importance of prayer, how we should pray, why we should pray. And to start, we're going to have Dessa open us up in Scripture. Yeah, so I'm going to open us up in Luke 5, um, verses 12 through 16. Alrighty, so while... And this is talking about Jesus. So this is when he cleanses a leper. Um, Verse 12. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one but to go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. But now even even more, the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed, healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. And so what, um, taking this passage, um, or what comes to mind in general, what should we pray for? I think that's a great question. And I think there really is no one answer to it on what we should pray for. Mm -hmm. The Lord calls us to cast all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our concerns onto him. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, he has a plan for this world, whether we see it or not. And so in terms of what to pray for, I think the best answer to that question would just be everything in your life, whether it's for strength, whether it's Mm -hmm. for compassion, patience, humility, whether you're worried if you'll be able to finish something or not, you're worried if you'll be able to see someone, you're worried if something will come to pass. Mm -hmm. I think we're called to just put it all in God's hands. Yeah. And so the question of what we should pray for could be answered simply by saying we should pray for everything yeah and the next question is for you Dessa how should we pray yeah so I really love this passage um, particularly because you see Jesus withdrawing um, to desolate places to pray and so it's just this idea of um, I almost think of just stillness and I think that word can be overused and we forget what it really means um, but I love um, something that how Jeremiah Burroughs puts it he says you don't pour water into a shaky glass like if I'm pouring water into a shaky glass it's gonna topple over so you still the glass and then you pour into it and I think that's the same idea with prayer you don't I'm not going to I mean, sometimes sometimes I do. It can be surrounded by a room full of people and and pray, but oftentimes I'll just, I'll sometimes, I'll withdraw. I'll I'll leave. So a lot of people, I'm sure you feel Mm -hmm. this too, like sometimes I get texts, people asking things from me, and and it's a blessing and it's a good thing, but sometimes you need to get away from that um, and still yourself and just give it to the Lord. So I think one, um, just being still, um, it's very easy to list off a mouth full of words and act like um, you're talking to a genie Mm -hmm. who's gonna grant wishes and it's not like that, he's a relational God. Um, And then two, I think one of the most overlooked parts of prayer is listening. So um, we can talk, 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 talk to God and yes, he wants to listen to us how often do we actually listen to him um and i think we really need to take the time to know what that looks Mm -hmm. like i think he can speak to us in many different ways um and 
not like not like an audible voice but um he does he does speak to us um through his word and of course in prayer um i have some crazy stories recently of how he answered a few of my prayers and if i was going 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 i wouldn't be able to see that um and then i just i saw this um i forget where i saw this but I, I read this one quote. It says, I am learning to let some battles be fought without swords, but with songs in quiet places behind closed doors, prayer. And I just love that because mm -hmm. that just kind of encompasses this idea of stillness and listening. Because um, if you're behind a closed door, you're closing, everything, you're closing the world off um, in a good way. Uh, and of course, there's always a balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you had just mentioned praying behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. um, the scripture actually talks about that as well in Matthew 6. Yeah. Uh, from verses 5 to 13, it discusses how those who pray in the streets, in public, to be heard mm -hmm. and to be recognized that they are praying are hypocrites. Yeah. Uh, but that the proper way to pray is by praying behind closed door without anyone knowing kind of secluding yourself mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if people know you're praying because the lord sees your heart he knows your thoughts before you say them yes so mm. it also specifically tells us that the way to pray is behind closed door those battles aren't one with a sword they're fought with words with song with worship with faith and nobody else has to see that everybody prays differently yes and when it comes to listening if you think about it, Jesus referred to those praying in the streets as hypocrites. You really can't listen to the Lord while you're surrounded by so many people, while you're surrounded by so much earthly concerns and worries, and people casting their earthly concerns and worries onto you. Mm -hmm. For we're called to cast them onto the Lord, not onto things of this earth. Mm -hmm. And so the ideal way to be able to cast those onto the Lord is by isolating yourself so while you're praying, it is only you and the Lord. Yes. There is less distractions. Having that quiet time is something that a lot of believers struggle with. I myself also struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Dessa said the most important part is listening. Yeah. And that can be very hard because there are just so many distractions. Whether it's your phone, whether it's your computer, whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's academics, whether it's work. Yeah. There are so many things that get in the way. So get rid of it. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but if, if we look at uh, the passage in Luke that Dessa read mm -hmm. Jesus still despite performing miracles despite being constantly tested by the Pharisees found time to go to secluded places and pray yeah you have to make time for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to make time for it yeah and so I have one more question for you Dessa why should we pray? What is the point of praying if God is all-powerful and can have his way anyway? Yeah, so I remember someone asking me this um, during a Bible study, and I was just like, it's a really, that's a really good question. And I think what it comes down to is our God is a relational God. And I once heard, why did he put the um, tree in the garden um, in the first place if Adam, Adam and Eve were going to... Um, if they could eat from that tree like like why would why would he do that and it's just this idea that if it wasn't there there wouldn't be a choice and then they wouldn't have a choice and god doesn't want robots he wants um people that choose him he wants the relationship which i think is beautiful so i think it's just this idea of intimacy and um love the more you talk to someone and the more you listen to someone you just develop this this closeness um and so i i don't know how this ties in but it's coming to mind so i'm just gonna say it but we often listen to respond so we're quick to respond rather than listening to understand and i think um that goes with our relationship with god like like just not being so quick to respond and saying, God, why is this happening? Or why did you do this? Or why did you take that away? Or why did you give me this and put this on my plate? It's no, I, I want to understand like, what do you, what's the big, the big plan? And uh, we don't, we don't see that because we're humans and we're this little speck that you can't even see in the scheme of things. So it's very humbling. But at the end of the day, yes, he is all powerful. 
and I think prayer is just that open door like how miraculous even is it that we that we can pray to this all all-powerful omniscient um omnipotent god um so yeah i know that answer is a bit vague but at the end of the day he wants a relationship and i think that coincides with that yeah and i just wanted to add on to that um in psalm 5 verse 22 mm -hmm. it says cast your burden on the lord and he will sustain you he will never permit the righteous to be moved yeah. And so when we, as we've been saying in this podcast, when we pray, that's when the Lord goes to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what, all we have to do is let him into our lives, invite him in. Mm -hmm. Praying is essentially saying, God, I accept you. I believe in you. I need your help because I myself am not strong enough. Yeah. And that's a very humbling thing to come to terms with. It's so much easier to, as Dessa said, to listen, to respond, say, well, I've been waiting for this for so long and I've never mm -hmm. gotten it. The Lord hasn't provided it for me. Yeah. And that's one of the things that causes so many people to detract from faith. If you're focused, there's this psychological term called functional fixedness, where if you're focused on just one aspect of something, you won't see everything it can be used for. Mm-hmm. So a very classical example is when you're camping and you have a winter jacket but you forgot a pillow. Yeah. Not everybody would think to use that jacket as a pillow. Yeah. Because they only see it as a jacket. Mm -hmm. So when we're put in times of struggle, if we just look at it through an earthly lens, through our eyes, mm -hmm. all we see is misfortune. All we see is pain and hurt. Yeah. I'm sure everybody, I myself included, can relate to that mm -hmm. of trying on our own to find joy in struggle. And you don't. It's very difficult to do. Yeah. But we're not called to do that. Mm -hmm. In those times, we're called to cast our concerns onto the Lord yeah. and to ask for his help. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gives us the answers to move past that functional fixedness, to move past that this struggle only serves to cause pain. Because you, you can also learn through every struggle. You can also gain insight and learn valuable lessons through failure. Mm -hmm. So by recentering yourself on God and just listening and really looking around to understand how he's working, not just to respond to how he's working, understanding that you don't understand everything. And that's mm -hmm. why we need to pray. Once we understand that, we move past this earthly functional fixedness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, it says he will never permit the righteous to be moved. When you're steadfast in the Lord, nothing in this world can break you. Yeah, because what can be shaken will be shaken. So that what can't be shaken will remain. And mm -hmm. he'll always remain. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I just wanted to wrap up with a beautiful quote that I heard while listening to a sermon about prayer once mm. and so it goes as so and so prayer says this beautiful beautiful thing that God absolutely loves I need you I need you Lord in my life and prayer says I choose you as my shepherd I choose to allow you into my life I need you in my life today and he leads those who follow him and so we have to understand that prayer means I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you into my marriage. I'm inviting you into my finances. I'm inviting you into my decision making. I'm inviting you into my home. Mm -hmm. And God says 100% of the time, I'll come. Yeah. And I really like that quote because it shows not only what we should pray for, it also shows how we should pray. Lord, I choose you. Lord, I'm inviting you. And it shows why we should pray. Because 100% of the time when we pray, the Lord will come. Yeah, always. Yeah. So, as always, we invite you to listen. But stay unsubscribed.